Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's session on Minister's Foundation. Last week, we studied on fulfilling God's purpose for our life. I hope you, you would have gone through the last four chapters that I requested you all to go through as your self-study. Did you all? Did we go through the last three chapters on positioning yourself to fulfill his purpose, the prize of the high call of God and finishing your course? Did we go through the last three chapters, which was assigned to us as our self-study? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. So today we are going to uh, we are going to study on the second book of our course notes that is receiving God's guidance receiving God's guidance. I hope you would have downloaded this notes. If you all have any challenge in downloading, please do let me know where I could uh, upload it again on the stream. Have everyone downloaded the notes? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So I will quickly go ahead and uh, share the screen on today's session. As some of our friends are joining in. Okay, even before we could start, we will start our class with a word of prayer. Can I request one of us to please lead us in prayer? Yes, please, Mr. Ebenezer, please go ahead. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful good morning, oh God. I praise you and uh, adore you for this uh, section. Please talk to us, make us to understand very clearly. We give up your madam into other hands. Please let her go. You understandingly the word of God of God. We praise you in Jesus' almighty name. I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. That was a wonderful prayer. Thank you. So, are everyone able to see the presentation? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. So, as we start with this new book, God, Receiving God's Guidance, we need, each of us need God's guidance in various matters in our life. Some may have to do with our small, uh, small decisions or the big decisions or sometimes the major decisions in our life. Before, in those days when the options were less to uh, uh, make a choice with, when we had to uh, choose uh, for our studies after our 10th uh, grade, it was very easy. There were only three options left, art, science, or commerce. But now, if we have to make a decision to study after our 10th grade, like there are about more than 32 subjects where we can make choice. And it becomes harder these days than before. Not only in our studies, when it comes to our career, choosing a life partner, being uh, or uh, uh, you know, uh, or which part of the world that uh, each of us have to stay in or live in, or it can be uh, something to do with our daily life. Which church do we go? Uh, you know, the small, petty decisions also sometimes it challenges us. And we, uh, you know, we want to, uh, for us to make a significant or a major decision, we all, uh, you know, we, we, it is so much in me that we had to depend on God. We have to depend on God so that we make the right decision in our life. So all of us desire that we want somebody to be with us, who can guide us, help us to make that right decision. So how do we journey with God so that we can hear him? We can hear him and uh, so that, you know, we are helped in, uh, in making decisions in our life. Let's see what the Bible tells us, how we can journey with God, how we can partner with God. 
how you and I can develop this relationship with God that He can guide us. There are uh, two important ways in which God guides, guides us is through His Word, the written scripture, and by the leading of the Holy Spirit. When we meditate on His Word, when we have been led by the Spirit, always, always God desires to lead us in the right path. One thing we must remember is that there is no such formula in the Bible that, uh, that, uh, uh, that tells us to follow. But then simply just go by the leading of the Holy Spirit or by His Word. Today we are going to look at 11 different ways uh, uh, by which the Bible offers uh, uh, that God releases His guidance into our life. With this, we will uh, move on to the chapter one in our book, God as our guide. We need God's guidance in various matters in our life to make decision. Psalms 37, Psalms chapter 37, verse 23 to 24. These are... Uh, before we could go move on to this verse, we will see uh, what are the different ways that uh, we would be studying today. Uh, not uh, not only today in the classes to come, there are eleven ways that we would be studying how God can guide us. The first is through His Word, the indwelling Spirit. The third is gifts of the Holy Spirit, the voice of the Holy Spirit, dreams and visions. Sixth is prophecies. Seventh is through his angels, godly counsel, renewed mind, times and seasons. And the eleventh is circumstance and divine orchestration. First, we will move on to 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. The scripture says, by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. By the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. We must build our lives on God's word and the work of His Spirit in us personally. We don't have to build our life on somebody else's experience or, or as we share our personal experience through the classes. It's not that we have to build, uh, uh, you know, build our life depending on what the other person shares or says, but we need to build our life on the very foundation of God's word. God's word should be our foundation. It's good for us to hear the testimony of others, how God led them, how they made the decision. It is good. We should just stay the pattern of the mod, what they went through, but then come back to the word because the word of God is what is needed for you and me to build our foundation. We need God's guidance in all kinds of matters in our life. And God promises to lead us and guide us. He desires, He desires to lead us and guide us. This is what the Psalms, Psalmist says in Psalms 37, verse 23 to 24. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his ways. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholds him with his, with his hand. You see, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. The word order means direct, set up, made perfect, made firm in the Lord. God takes pleasure in leading us because we are his children. He is much interested in our life. He is very much interested. So when we depend on God, he leads us. He guides us. But there are certain seasons in our life that we do make mistakes, we do stumble, we do fall. But remember, that's not the end of everything. 
when we repent when we look at god and when we cry out saying lord lift me up put me back into the right track our god is faithful enough to you know put us back into the right track and lead us he is he is our god he is our father we are his precious being and he's faithful enough to lift us up the lord grasps his hand and support and upholds us with this uh, we also go to the next verse Psalm 32 verse 8 to 9 the word of god says that i will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go and i will guide you with my eyes so very important i will instruct you what a wonderful promise it assures us that a god never gives up on us he will instruct us he will teach us and he will guide us but are we willing to receive that instruction receive that teaching receive that guidance from god or are we saying that i know everything i can lead my life these are the simple things then why should i inquire with god i can make decision for, for myself i am a grown up these are the words sometimes these days youth tell to the parents sometimes there are few of us we also say this to god these are the small things i should not be disturbing god with it i can decide for my own i don't have to inquire god with these things maybe those are the times that we stumble maybe those are the times we go astray we have a major fall in our life what was thought simple may be the major fall so you we have been encouraged by the word of god saying that there's nothing called small or big or major or minor when we see god in all our being god desires god desires to guide us to lead us to instruct us to teach us because the lord has promised that he will lead us he will instruct us he will teach us and he will guide us we see in psalms uh, 25 verse 12 who is the man that fears the lord him shall he teach in the ways he chooses it is so very important for us to fear the lord the word fear here is reverence the respect at the most honor the reverence that we give to the lord those who have reverence for the lord will learn from him the path they should follow it is very important when we give that first place to god he leads us the revelation of god's will the first point here talks about god's will is always consistent with his nature god's will is always consistent with his nature a god is a god who's unchanging He does not change. He is the holy God. Not one day he is holy and the other day he becomes unholy. No, he is an holy God. His nature is consistent. He is the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation of shadow of turning back. God, by his nature, is constant. God the second point here is God's will is always consistent with his word God's will is always consistent with his word God will not lead us to do something that contradicts his own word God's word is truth God's word is truth consider a few examples like in the bible we see that um, you know um, 
in the bible we see that uh, uh, you know how uh, how uh, how to keep the sabbath the pharisees did not permit anyone to do anything on the sabbath on the other hand we see jesus healing people and his own disciples were plucking the grains and they were eating on the day of sabbath so pharisees uh, were uh, you know uh, uh, they were upset with jesus saying that you and your disciples are not keeping the sabbath and jesus explains that the, he is the lord of the sabbath the sabbath was uh, was um, man was not made for sabbath but sabbath for man how important is to do something good or to keep the day of sabbath he explains it so he is not contradicting his own word but we need to understand the word in the right way with this we will move on to the next point god promises are a revelation of god's will god's promises are a revelation of god's will the reason god promised us something was because he intended for us to have it so we can understand god's promises are an expression of his will for our life and god desires for us to know his will god truly desires he does not hide something from us but he reveals it to us before in hand we see that time and again from the generation to generation how god calls people and he reveals his plan to them and then he fulfills it in their life even today you and i as we sit here it's not a surprise that we are here god called us there's a testimony for each of us that the calling of god in our life he reveals his will to us he reveals his plan to us for some of us it may be step by step but he is revealing it beforehand is unfolding it beforehand that's our god he desires to reveal his will to us to his people to make it known In Colossians chapter one, verse nine to ten, we read: For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of god we need to be filled with the knowledge of all his wisdom and spiritual understanding so that we may walk worthy of the lord that we may be pleasing to the lord and we will be fruitful in our life because we are filled with his knowledge with his wisdom and with a spiritual understanding so that we are fruitful and we can heal much in whatever we are doing in our life here the word knowledge means precise the greek word called pegnosis which means precise correct knowledge so as a believer we may pray and have we may pray to have this kind of knowledge so as each of us year as we desire for this knowledge in our heart lord help me to have this knowledge we all need his knowledge we all need his wisdom knowledge and understanding so can we declare it over self as we study this book they we would be making many declarations over ourself which can help us grow in his word grow in his spirit so that we may be fruitful to serve in god's kingdom today can we take this time to declare this knowledge the knowledge of god over ourself 
can we say that lord i have your wisdom knowledge and understanding i declare the knowledge of god which is full complete precise correct deep and a clear knowledge of your will upon me in the name of jesus amen Amen. 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 Very important. Very important that we increase. Even Jesus, when he was born in this world, naturally, he, the scripture says that Jesus increased in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We also, as we grow, as we study his word as we grow in spirit we should also increase in this wisdom in this knowledge and spiritual understanding Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8 to 10 17 says for you were once darkness but now you are light in the lord walk as children of light for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness righteousness and truth finding out what is acceptable to the lord therefore do not be unwise but understanding what the will of the lord is very important scripture very important scripture for us to find out the lord so that we won't be unwise in understanding what the will of the lord is so that we are the children of light and we walk in the light and there is no darkness in us when we take god's guidance when we receive his guidance we are the children of light and we walk in that light fully pleasing well pleasing unto the lord sometimes in some situations when it comes to decision making we need to be wise god has given us this wisdom this knowledge and this understanding to make a wise decision it is through our common sense at certain times we say no the scripture says this let's do it no just like how when jesus was tempted in the wilderness make the stone into bread jesus never heeded those voices and converted those stones to bread we need to make wise decisions we need to uh, we need to you know receive uh, sometimes we need to make the good the practical uh, some decisions to we should be made with the common sense so we need god's wisdom knowledge and understanding that we may uh, be wise enough to make our daily decisions in our life the fifth is the thing that remains unknown the things that remain unknown Deuteronomy 29 chapter 29 verse 29 we read that the secret things belong to the Lord our God but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of his law there are few secret things that belongs to Lord and we need to honor that we need to honor that and and have no other answers or be comfortable in not knowing what it is because for every uh, everything there is a reason or every season that god has kept certain things pertaining to uh, you know certain well he would have kept it secret like the coming of the lord we can live at peace with the unknown unanswered because we have the peace that is beyond our understanding so we need to just stay in peace when it comes to certain things now are they different categories of god's will are they different categories of god's will 
Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, which is holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Now, what does this verse say? Is it giving us three categories for God's will? Or it's just one? I think it's one. Yes. Yes. Some of us are from different uh, denomination background, or we would have heard different messages saying that, you know, the scripture gives us three different categories. So God's will is holy. Sometimes it is acceptable, which means tolerable, or, you know, it, it can be lenient, and it is reasonable service. No, this verse is not talking about that. When this verse scripture says that it's holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, when it says acceptable, means it is holy and it is equal to holy. Nothing lesser. God has a standard and it is holy. And he's expecting that from us. For an example, if I have an apple and I say this apple is uh, red in color and it tastes sweet and it smells good. So does that mean I have three different apple or one apple? One apple. One apple. The same way, we are just describing his character, but then it's one. <laughs> one apple. God. Yes, thank you. So it is one, one category of God's will. There's no other category. There's only one which is holy. God is a holy God. Romans 12, 1 to 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. A God is a God of light, and there is no darkness in him. Neither there is uh, any gray areas in him. Our goal is to understand that. Walk in what is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. As what the word says, we should not be conformed to the world, but be transformed. How? By renewing of our mind, that we may prove what is good, and acceptable and the perfect will of God. It's very important to walk in that will. To be in what someone calls the permissive will of God is really to be out of the will of God. Again, to be in the permissive will of God is really to be out of the will of God. So it is always one category, holy. We need to be acceptable in the sight of God. So in receiving God guidance, we have a responsibility to play with, to do our part in fulfilling that to in fulfilling or to receive God's guidance. What are they? There are three. Uh, our responsibility is in three areas. That is by seeking, listening, and obeying. We must seek, listen, and obey. What are our responsibilities? Can anyone say? Seeking, listening, and obeying. Thank you. Thank Seeking, you. listening, and obeying. As we seek God, let's turn to Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 12 to 13. Can one of us read this, please? Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 12 and 13. Then you will call upon me, 
and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you, and you will seek me, and I'll find me, when you shout for me with all your heart. So God is inviting us to seek him, to call upon him, to receive his revelation of things that we do not know. As we seek God with whole heart, God responds to such a heart attitude. We also see in Jeremiah 33, 3, Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. As we see God, he leads us to find. It is so very important. Our God is a God who answers our prayer. When we call him, he listens. He answers to us. He is our prayer answering God. Matthew 7, 7 to 8 says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. So when we seek and we receive God's guidance, it takes us into different expressions. Seeking his guidance during the normal, normal uh, through the normal course of things. It can be in our daily life, the small things. But when we seek him, he desires even to lead us in the smallest of the decisions in our life. How do we seek God in these small decisions? Some of us may think, why should we disturb God? Small things, I can handle it. But God is saying there's nothing called small or major. I am a God who desires to talk to you to help you make even the smallest of the decisions. He leads us. He's a faithful God. Second point here we see is seeking his guidance during special times of seeking. When it comes to special times, some of us would uh, seek God to make some major decisions in our life. That would mean take up the extra time and extra week, set that time aside, seek God for his direction in our life. When we seek God, like how Isaiah 58, 8 says, sometimes we need to fast and pray and ask God. It can be any area. It can be a breakthrough. It can be a, a decision in your career, in the choosing your life partner or going abroad. It can be anything. But when we seek God earnestly, depending completely on his will. Our God is a God who reveals things to us because of the uh, relationship that we have, because wholeheartedly we are seeking God. And as per his word, he says, when you seek, I will answer, I will lead you. And the third point of our third point in seeking is guidance through unexpected God moments. Sometimes we don't have to seek too much. And when, you know, it is an emergency, it is an immediate, when we just say, Lord, help. When we call upon the name of the Lord, he answers, he saves us. He just breaks through the situation and comes in and he guides us. We see supernatural things happen as though it was normal. Just God breaks into the situation and he speaks to us, he leads us, he guides us. And all this can happen when we have a relationship with God, when we have surrendered ourselves completely and invited God to move in our life in every area, Holy Spirit takes control and you know, he just leads us. This we will move on to the second one. After seeking, here we have come to listening. John chapter 10, verse 1 to 5 and 27. Can anyone, anyone read this? Any of us read this, please? John chapter 10, verses 1, 1 to 5. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs by some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the, door, the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hears his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name, and 
leads them out and then he brings out his own sheep he go he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice yet yes Please and yet ahead. yet they will bring they will be by no means follow a stranger but will flee from him for they do not know the voice of the strangers my sheep hear my voice and i know them and they follow me thank you thank you so much sir so what did we understand from this scripture the second important component about receiving god's guidance is listening through his voice the sheep hear his voice they are listening in for the shepherd's voice we also saw a, a whatsapp video that was released uh, released saying that there was um, they were a, 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 a herd of sheep and you know many people who visited that farm tries to call that sheep with different sounds with different sounds they try to call the sheep but the sheep are not responding to the sounds of any one any of the visitors there but the minute when the shepherd came and he, he just gave one sound he released one sound in the form of a whistle all the sheep no matter how far they were no matter how busy they were in grazing the grass immediately they left everything turned to the shepherd towards the direction where he was and they all ran to him you see they say the sheep are the dumb bean but if they can hear his voice how much you and i should hear the voice of god if the sheep can hear the voice of a shepherd they have trained themselves they inclined themselves to hear his voice how much more you and i should develop this relationship with our god to hear the voice of his the small still voice of the holy spirit speaks into us is very important we need to hear his voice it's not that god is not loud enough that we can't hear but then the relationship that we develop in our daily life he opens our ears he opens our heart he opens our mind that we could hear we could communicate to him and we could hear him speak back to us because our god is a god who speaks to us as he listens he speaks to us he guides us in the right way proverbs chapter 3 verse 32 as we seek as we listen the very important is that we need to obey obey the lord obeying is very important because god guides us and he he wants us to obey him when we in obedience comes you know the reward there's a reward in every obedience proverbs 332 says for the perverse person is an abomination to the lord but his secret counsel is with the upright it is very important for us to heed the counsel of god god reveals a secret counsel to his children why the only the upright the answer is because they desire to do what is right in the eyes of god god speaks to us that we can obey him and be uh, and walk in the way that pleases him god guides us and we must follow him by faith with obedience and patience sometimes obeying can be painful but then when we obey with all humility we see the result of god we see the reward of god we see the hand of god upon our life that's what psalm 37 31 says the law sorry 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 psalms 37 37 says mark the blameless man and observe the upright for the future of the man of that man is peace amen so with this uh, we uh, we will take a break of 10 minutes 
and we will come back after that and we will start with chapter 2 okay so we'll be back by 10 minutes is that okay yes ma'am thank, yes, thank you thank you thank you thank you god bless you.